This is your thermochemistry pre-lab video. We have two objectives in this lab. The first is to determine the enthalpy of formation of magnesium oxide, and the other is to determine the heat evolved, or the delta H, from neutralizing a few different acids and bases of varying strengths. We'll go through these in, in turn. So part one is the formation reaction for magnesium oxide, and it's given in this equation here. So magnesium plus oxygen gives us magnesium oxide. And we would like to know what the energy change or enthalpy change is for this reaction. And when you determine the enthalpy change from elements to a compound, it's called the heat of formation. And we're going to use Hess's law to figure this out. If you have not learned Hess's law in your lecture yet, please review that section in your textbook. Hess's law states that the overall enthalpy change for a reaction is equal to the sum of the enthalpy changes for the individual steps in that reaction. If you're interested in this reaction here, this reactants to products, and you're, you don't know what this, this heat of reaction is, or this change in, in enthalpy from reactants to products, you want to know this. But perhaps you can't perform this experiment, perhaps it's too difficult or expensive, dangerous, what have you. But you have another way to turn these reactants into an intermediate reaction, and then you can turn that into the products. Or even if you have, you can go from products to an intermediate and reactants to an intermediate, you can add these changes in enthalpy to get your enthalpy of reaction of what you're interested in. So the delta H, or change in enthalpy of one reaction, plus the delta H, or change of enthalpy in of another reaction, we can add those together and get what we're looking for. And this, can, this doesn't have to just be two reactions, it can be as many as it needs to be. So why are we able to do this? Enthalpy is what's called a state function, so it's path independent. It doesn't matter how you get from the enthalpy of the reactants to the enthalpy of the products, as long as you end up and start at the same place, the change will be the same. So here's an example. Perhaps you wanted to calculate the enthalpy of combustion, the transition between graphite and diamond. So we, we want carbon, graphite, to carbon, diamond, just this transition here. But what we, we don't have that information, but what we do have is we have graphite plus oxygen goes to CO2, and we have a change in enthalpy for that reaction. When a delta H is negative, recall that that is an exothermic reaction. So this is an exothermic change. We also have carbon dioxide going to diamond <clears throat> and oxygen. We have that enthalpy change. That requires energy, so that's a positive number. That's an endothermic reaction. What's neat about Hess's law is that you can put these reactions underneath each other and cancel like terms from the reactant side and the product side. So for example, on the left, or the reactant side, we have one mole, you know, we have a, we have a one here, one mole of oxygen, and in this reaction, we have one mole of oxygen on the right, or the product side. So we can cancel those. We can add up these reactions and cancel like terms. So we're going to cancel the oxygen, and then look at the carbon dioxide. We have one mole of carbon dioxide on, on the right, or the product, and one mole of carbon dioxide on the left. So we can cancel those as well and add them up. So the overall equation becomes the equation that we were looking for, graphite to diamond. If we do this, we can simply add up the enthalpies and get the enthalpy of the reaction that we're looking for. Since this is a positive number, it's an endothermic reaction, so it requires energy to proceed. This was quite an easy example because we were able to just line up both of these equations and cancel like terms and we, we were magically given what we were looking for. However, if you have equations that don't line up exactly, or you don't have the right number of moles, we had one mole of oxygen here and one mole here, let's say we had one mole of oxygen here and two here, we could double this reaction, and that means multiplying your coefficients by two, all of your coefficients by two, and also multiplying your delta H by two. Then we would have two moles of oxygen, we could cancel with two moles of oxygen. Alternatively, you can also multiply by a fraction. So we could have multiplied the second one by one half. 
The other thing you can do with these to mani manipulate the equations so that you can add them up and get what you want is to reverse the equations. So if we needed our oxygen on a different side to be able to cancel, we can simply take our products and make them reactants, make our reactants products, and if we do that, our delta H simply changes sign. So if it was positive and you reverse the reaction, make it negative. Because if a reaction is endothermic in one direction, it will be exothermic in the other. So in our case, for this lab, we're going to determine this delta H of formation, which is the bottom equation down here, magnesium plus oxygen. It's formation because we're going from elements to the compound. These are the equations that we will use in Hess's law so that we can add these together and get what we're looking for. You will have to look at these equations and manipulate them, either multiply them by a factor or reverse the reaction in one or more of these so that you can add them together and, and get the heat of formation of magnesium oxide. You're going to need to do this for your pre-lab. So we will be performing the first two equations, okay? So we're going to react magnesium with an acid and determine its delta H. We are also going to be reacting magnesium oxide with an acid and determining its delta H. This last reaction, we're just going to look up what the delta H is, but we do need it in order to complete all of the information that we need to use Hess's law. So here's the procedure. For part 1A, we'll be reacting magnesium, a piece of magnesium ribbon, with hydrochloric acid, and this is the reaction. You're going to do three trials, one with 0.2 grams, one with 0.4, and one with about 0.5 grams of magnesium. You will, they, they will not be exactly this amount. You do not need to tear off pieces of magnesium to make it perfect. Just record what the actual mass is as precisely as the balance will allow. You'll have a setup like this. So you'll perform your reaction in styrofoam cups. You want to support them in a beaker. This cardboard is just for insulation on top. Okay, so you're going to cover your your reaction vessel with cardboard and you will have a, either a thermometer or a temperature probe in order to determine the temperature changes within your calorimeter. So your first step is to add your acid to your cup and determine its initial temperature. Once you have its initial temperature and its initial mass, you will combine them together. So you'll drop the magnesium in. You can stir with your thermometer or your probe. And you want to record not only the initial temperature of the acid, but then the, the maximum temperature that's attained once this reaction is completed. If it were an endothermic reaction, you would want to record the lowest temperature. So we're looking for the maximum change in temperature here. So we're going to calculate the delta H, or change in enthalpy, of this reaction. We're going to use Q equals mc delta T, where mass is the mass of the acid plus the mass of the magnesium. We're going to use the specific heat of water because acid is dilute enough to make this assumption. And our change in temperature is the maximum change in temperature. So it is the maximum temperature reached minus the initial temperature of the acid. When you do this calculation, you'll solve for Q and your answer will be in joules. You need to have your answer in kilojoules per mole. So convert your joules to kilojoules and then divide by the number of moles of magnesium. And you can get your moles of magnesium from your grams of magnesium. Now you're going to repeat this same process for all three trials and you will average these three trials for your delta H of reaction for that first step. You'll repeat all of the same, the same thing for magnesium oxide, however you only have two trials of magnesium oxide with the same mass, but you'll do the same process and even the same calculations. Once you have your delta H of reaction for your first and second equations here and you've looked up your final you can do your rearranging you can do your multiplication whatever you, you need to do in order to satisfy Hess's law and you can determine your delta H of formation of magnesium oxide so for part two we will be looking at the heat of neutralization of some acids and bases so we'll be performing the reactions between these acids and bases so you're going to perform two trials of each acid with each base. So you will perform 
two trials of hydrochloric with ammonia with acetic acid and ammonia with hydrochloric and sodium hydroxide and acetic acid and sodium hydroxide. So that will be a total of eight reactions. Here's an example of one of the reactions. So sodium hydroxide with HCl gives us NaCl and water. We're going to use the same exact setup with our calorimeter. So you will place your acid in your cup, determine its initial temperature, and then you will be pouring in a solution of your NaOH. So both of these are in solution and you're just mixing them and determining the temperature change. So you want the maximum temperature change. If it goes up, then you want the maximum temperature it reaches. If it goes down, you want to record the, the minimum temperature that it reaches. Again, very similar to the calculations that we did before. We want the delta H of this neutralization reaction. So we'll use MC delta T. This time, the mass will be the mass of the acid solution and the mass of the base solution. And in this case, you're going to assume that we have a density of one gram per milliliter. And you want to combine both of these because they're both in the reaction vessel and they'll both be either absorbing or releasing the heat. Again, use the specific heat for water and your maximum delta T. Again, your answer will be in joules. You need to convert it to kilojoules and this time divide by the number of moles of the acid. Average your two trials for each set of, of acid-base combinations and report that. So for your report, you do need to uh, issue a typed report, but you will be attaching the thermochemistry calculation sheet to your report. You can see this in your manual, but we will be providing one copy of this calculation sheet for you when you come into lab. But I recommend that you don't do your calculations on this sheet initially, that you do that in your notebook first, and then once you have everything set and you know it's correct, you can just fill out the sheet nice and neatly and correctly. So attach that to your, your fully typed lab report and hand that in the following week. And this concludes this video.